Hi, student doctors. My name is Nick Hadamia. I'm a third year medical student here today with my lovely patient, Alvin. And today we're going to be talking about the diabetic foot exam. Now, like any examination, it's really important to start with a thorough history. And in particular for a diabetic foot exam, some important questions that you want to ask is if there's been any changes to the patient's foot since the last visit, if they have any previous history of ulcers or current ulcers, and you also want to ask about their footwear and their toenails. So this is really important because footwear and toenail issues are actually the number one causes of foot ulcers. And lastly, you also want to make sure that you have the latest HbA1c value. So after we take a thorough history, we want to do an inspection and we'll go through some more details about what that consists of a little later. And after the inspection component, we're going to move on to our 10 point diabetic foot exam. Now this consists of assessing the temperature, looking at um, any skin changes, and you also want to look at the cap refill. We're testing proprioception, and we're also looking at the pulses, deep tendon reflexes. We're going to do a vibratory sense and also a monofilament test. So an easy way to remember all of this is that you're going to be doing temperature, and then it's pinch, pinch, pulse, pulse, reflex, 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 vibration, and monofilament. Moving on to the inspection part of the exam, we're going to look at the skin, hair, and toenails. So looking at the hair, we just want to note if there's any hair loss bilaterally. And you're just going to assess the skin for any erythema, dryness, or excessive sweating. And for the toenails, we want to look at um, each of the toenails bilaterally to see if there's any fungal infections, if there's any deformities of the toenails. And we also want to take a look at the overall skin of the foot, looking for any ulcerations, including in between the web spaces. And we want to assess for any gross deformities, which include hammer toes, bunions, shark of foot, or any callusing. We also want to see if there's fissuring on the heel or dryness. And lastly, you can assess the arch height, seeing if there's any pes cavus or pes planus. So after our inspection, we're going to move on to the 10-point diabetic foot exam. The first thing we're going to do is assess the temperature bilaterally. So we're going to take our hands and place them, and we're going to assess for any coolness or extreme warmth. And in particular, we want to see if we notice cooling as we go more distally. After we assess the temperature, we're going to get capillary refill. So this is the first pinch. So you can assess this on the big toe. And anything within three seconds is considered to be normal. And the last pinch we're going to do is proprioception. So what we're going to have our patient do is close his eyes. I'm going to move his big toe up or down, and I'm going to have him tell me if it's up or down. Up, down, okay. down, up. Awesome. So after our two pinches, which is the cap refill and the proprioception, we're going to move on to our pulses. So the first pulse we're going to assess is the dorsalis pedis pulse. And we can find this by having our patient extend his big toe and look for that extensor hallucis longus tendon. It'll be just lateral to that. And so Alvin has good pulses bilaterally, and they seem equal and symmetric. And then the next pulse we're going to assess is the posterior tibial pulse. And just like the dorsalis pedis, these are equal and symmetric bilaterally. Next, we're going to assess the DTRs. So there are three DTRs we need to test, the first being the plant jar. We're also going to check the Achilles. Good. And then the last one we're going to do is the Babinski. Good, and I didn't see any flaring with the Babinski, so it's uh, negative Babinski. So after we do the DTRs, the next thing we're going to do is take out our 128 hertz um, tuning fork, and we're going to give it a good strike. I'm going to place it on the first metatarsal head here, and ask our patient if he's able to feel it. Yes. Good. Check that one again. Yes. So next we're going to move on to the monofilament test, and to do this we're going to use a 10 gram monofilament. The gram stands for the weight of the fishing line, and we're going to be testing 10 different points on the bottom of our patient's foot. But before we do that, we want to educate our patient about what we're about to do. So I'm going to tell Alvin 
Um, Alvin, I'm going to be using a monofilament to test 10 different locations on your on the bottom of your foot. Just let me know if you're able to feel them. It shouldn't hurt at all. All I'm going to do is just press this down on your skin and you'll just feel a light touch, okay? Okay. Okay. So the first areas we're going to assess are the uh, metatarsals and what we're going to be doing is placing the monofilament perpendicular to the foot and you're going to apply enough pressure just to blanch the monofilament. So the first location is the first metatarsal. You ever feel that, Alvin? Yes. Okay. You're going to move to the third. Yes. And then the fifth. Yes. And then we'll move up to the toes, the first toe. Yes. Third toe. Yes. Fifth toe. Yes. All right, and then we're going to go into the, the midline region of the plantar arch here. Yes. And move out laterally. And down to the calcaneus. Yes. Good. And then the last spot is going to be in between the first and second toe in the web space here. Yes. Great. And that concludes the monofilament exam. So that concludes our 10 point diabetic foot exam. After we do that, we also want to take a look at our patient's footwear. As I mentioned earlier, footwear is one of the main causes of ulceration on the feet. So particular things we want to look for is just whether or not the footwear is appropriate. So looking at the size. Also, um, if we noted that our patient has any pes cavus or pes planus, we also want to maybe recommend some arch support. And we also want to educate our patient about um, how to properly cut their toenails, so cutting them straight across. In addition to that, we want to educate our patient on overall um, how to control his diabetes and also how to do his own foot inspection, how to wash his feet, and also to tell him to come back in for his next annual diabetic foot exam. So that is everything you need to know for the diabetic foot exam. Best of luck and that's it. <laughs> I'm like close, dude. I'll just fade it to black and that's it.